fast. Uh, I'm going to hit go live here in just a second. Everybody showing connected. I'm going to hit go live on Facebook. If you're watching a recording, do fast forward a couple minutes before we get started here. Okay, we have new audio today, so we're definitely testing that out. And uh, let's see if you can hear me. Because as you notice, we are not co coming to you from Central Command. We are, um, we've gotten rid of the Princess Leia look. So, let's see. Who all is out there? If you're on Twitch, do say hello. If you're on Facebook, say hello too. Okay, so you can definitely hear me on Twitch. Let's see how YouTube is going, or I'm sorry, how Facebook is going. Because Lord knows who's watching us on YouTube. Hello, hello. Okay. Okay, so it looks like audio is working. How exciting is that? <laughs> Yay! We finally got ourselves a good microphone. And um, again, sort of just, oops. Sort of just working through the technology as always. Okay, so best story before we get started. Best story last week, what happened? What you don't know is this camera that I'm looking at right here is on a shelf above the bench, okay? And it fell over last week right into my quench bowl, which is right next to the pickle. So I got that lucky with the pickle and that it didn't fall in the pickle. So I think I just gonna go buy a backup camera just in case it actually falls in the pickle one day so good to have a, a backup but that's the story from last week woohoo anyway okay so it is just about one o'clock we're gonna get started you got anything else for me Andy before we get started okay Okay, it's one o'clock. It is Q Talk Live. I am Q Farm Gray, and we, this is Minimal Metal Monday. So, for everyone who's joining us for the first time, if you're joining us on Twitch, um, I actually don't respond really much to Twitch. Um, Andy is doing all the responses. So, if you have questions, he's ab absolutely following along. He's actually in my ear. So, he tells me your questions, and I answer your questions along the way. If you're on Facebook, the only thing we can do right now is like your, your post. So, if you have a question, do just type it in, and Andy will relay it to me. So if you have a private question, do reach out to us um, personally and we will respond to you. So as far as links and information, everything is posted on the QTalk Facebook page because we've discovered that posting it on Twitch has not been incredibly helpful to anyone but us. So we're trying to, you know, get it out there however we can get out there. But definitely you can find us um, on uh, Facebook. So. Anyway, so the Facebook page is Q Talk if you're looking for that. And if you're on uh, Facebook and you want to go to Twitch, it is Q Farm Gray. And also on YouTube, it is Q Farm Gray, is my channel. So all the videos are posted there. Twitch only lasts for two weeks. And Facebook and YouTube, from what I understand, it's indefinite until everything changes. You know, that's how it goes. Anyway, so today, what are we doing? Today, we are doing the. I'm excited for this. Um, this is the Lily of the Valley necklace. This is a three-part series, which is the first time we're doing this. It's next week will be the, oops, next week will be the bracelet. They're all riffs of more or less the same design, but there's always something a little bit different about each one. And then the week after we're going to do the ring, which I love, love, love this ring for some reason. I don't know. Every so often I make something that I just absolutely love and that's what it is. So for, again, for those who are new, Everything that you see on Monday is Minimal Metal Monday because it is complementary to the projects of Minimal Metal Jewelry, the book that was published back in February. You can definitely get a copy of that on our website and if you want it signed, I can sign it too. If you have lost me on Twitch, I guess telling them to refresh is not necessarily helpful. So honey, why don't you post that on the chat? So yeah, apparently Twitch is being twitchy. So, so anyway, if um, anytime you're losing the connection, unless <laughs> we lose it here, you might just want to refresh. It's things have been a little bit glitchy lately. I'm not really clear why, but um, anyway, 
there's our there's the story right okay okay so all right so let's get started let's talk about everything that you need to get this project done so bench blocks of course two is helpful but one is the definite you'll need a chasing hammer of some sort of course i love my little baby chasing hammer um, frets a flush cutter is always helpful but a pair of side cutter is good if you don't like filing you want a really nice ultra flush uh, lindstrom cutter is what we recommend because i love those cutters some chain nose pliers some um, flat nose pliers and or some bent nose pliers anything that's sort of flat doesn't have any teeth in it remember we're jewelers we don't need the teeth okay because it just mars and creates all kinds of havoc and lots of cleanup for later a pair of round nose pliers will also be helpful today and if you really want to you can definitely use the multi-looping plier this will keep things very consistent but is not a um, a must-have um, for this project okay so there you go for materials now the project was done in a a two-tone we have copper and we have silver but you can definitely do it with all silver or all copper or you can even throw brass in and that's what I'm going to do today so you're going to need 16 gauge oops you're going to need 16 gauge um, wire whether it is brass silver or copper I would not use fine silver because it's a little bit too soft except for um, the granules that you're going to need and oh I forgot tweezers and a file is something you'll need today too so that we can file those ends and make it really nice and we have some sandpaper sandpaper will always make things really nice and soft and wearable okay ruler is of course um, a uh, something we always use all right so let's jump in let's get started by the way if you want the download to these instructions you can get it on our website at theurbanbeater.com the link was provided for you in the details of the uh, QTalk Facebook page, okay, for this video. All right, let's get in a little closer. There we go. Okay. So, um, as you can see with this design, we're going in descending order. First things first is we're going to do the make the middle, and then we'll make the outside, and then we'll create granules to go um, to go with the pieces. Okay. So you'll need three sizes, one and three quarters, one and a half, and one and a quarter inches for the base one. For the base on this one that I'm sampling today, I'm going to do it in brass. And of course, I'm going to use my Lindstrom cutters. And so we'll go one and three quarters right about there. Oops. One and a half. And one and a quarter. Okay, so by cutting it into these sizes, it's, it will get you to your descending sizes. There's two ways of doing what I'm about to do next. Um, so let's follow along. First of all, I want to straighten out my wire because, you know, I just like, you don't have to because we're going to be doing a lot of bending and whatnot, but I just like working um, from a good place, you know, then I don't have to worry about kinks and things later. So I just like to flatten it out a little bit, not flatten it out, straighten it out. A little bit you can use your nylon nose pliers if you have them to straighten out your your wire but this for me is the easiest way to get about it to go about it and then I like to wedge it between two bench blocks and straighten it out like that okay okay, okay. so next up we're going to take out our um, chasing hammer and you're going to chase about a quarter inch of the end one end of each of the wires okay okay so the other thing too about this is you don't have to do this step but I really have always liked the look of a flattened end when I'm bending it over because what I'm going to do with this I'm going to bend it over to make a loop and it just makes this really nice finish and it's just bring an extra little bit of dimension to your piece just like so I feel like I need a little bit more on this one and we're 
we're just flattening it, okay? Take out your round nose pliers, and then we're going to make a loop. It's about a, approximately a four millimeter loop. So right here, and notice how my hands are. I'm pointing my, I'm sorry, my palm is up and my thumb is out, and I'm just going to bend it right over. All the way over, you see that? Until it meets, okay? And as you can see, it gives it this nice little flat finish right there, okay? And do it again on all of them. And if you're having a hard time with this, anneal it. Okay. Oops, I made that one a little bit big. So what happens if you make it too big? You can take out your chain nose pliers and bring it in. Make it a little smaller, just like that. Okay. You're going to do this for all of them, okay? So again, approximately a four millimeter link. You want it nice and even about the same size for all of them. See? Just like so. Alright. This one's still a little bit big for me. Make it a little bit smaller. Just a teeny bit. There you go. Alright, so next up, you want to make sure that these ends are um, are not beveled. So I'm going to take some of that off. I see this small problem. You can also file them if you'd like. Take out your needle file or your um, student file and just file them a little bit like so, whatever, if you have any burrs, okay? And then we're going to bend this down, but I need to keep track here. Okay, so the first one is going to be the biggest loop, okay? So it's about a 3 8 inch loop, and notice I'm holding my loop up, and I'm going to bend this to the side, okay? I'm not going to bend it up towards it because this is the loop, oops, you need this loop to be facing up. So it makes a connection and it makes a nice transition to your chain and your um, your flower is going to be to the side, okay? So here, I'm just going to go down at approximately, I don't know, maybe just over an eighth and I'm going to bring it around like so. And I don't want really a loop, I want more of a hook, do you see that? much more of a hook and I'm going to bring it around like so see easy and you'll do the same thing for the others again to the side this one needs to be trimmed just a little bit you probably can't see that but I can okay If this is easier for you, I like to do it with my um, I like to do it with my chain nose. But if it's easier for you just to put it into a round nose like this and bend it around, so be it. But you do want this one to be smaller. You see, you want it to be smaller than the previous one because we're working in descending size. So make sure you're paying attention, not just willy nilly that. There you go. There's the next one, and then this one is going to be even smaller. Gosh, did I pick up the wrong one? <laughs> okay. Hopefully I did pick up the wrong one for that middle one. I feel like this one's a little long, but anyway. Okay. Okie dokie there. And again, we're just going to bend this around and bring it down. Oh good, it's smaller. <laughs> I'm just going to take out my chain nose, my bent chain nose, let's see, and bring it in. Okay, so one, two, three, there's your loops. Now what you'll notice here is my cut is slightly off. Can you see that? My cut slightly off, so you're going to have to cut onto the inside of this so that it meets this one better. So I'm going to turn this out. My flat edge is to the side that I want to cut, and I'm going to miter that just a little bit. If not, you can definitely take out your uh, file and file that if that's easier for you. Oops, like so. 
And notice I'm using a barrette file because there are no teeth on this side, so I don't have to worry when I'm in here that I'm doing damage anywhere else, okay? I'm just gonna go right in there. I'm gonna file that just a little bit, and then I'm going to bring this around. Like so. And you see? Nice connection. Okay. So you'll do that, you'll repeat that for the other two. We're just gonna finish with one today. Okay. And let's see, what else am I doing? Oh, so now you're, you'll need your uh, copper pieces and we're gonna go with one and a quarter and one inch are the two that we'll do. And again, we're gonna work in descending size, right? Okay, so there's one and then this one will be one and a quarter. Okay, so for the two side ones, we're not going to hammer the ends. We're just going to make the loop. Okay, the so same thing. And you want them in, in different sizes so that it's descending. Like so, yep. And you'll do the same thing here. We're going to miter this just a little bit so that it makes a connection a little bit better. Can you miter this before you bend it? Sure. You figured out the angle. Okay, and then I'll bring this really close like so. Make sure it makes a nice tight connection. And I'm just gonna wiggle it towards one another so it's touching. Okay, and it'll look like this. Okay, and then the other one. Actually, I think I'm going to make this one a little bit bigger just because I can. And again, miter that a little bit. Just like so. Okay. File as you need to. If you don't have a great flush cutter, you're going to absolutely have to file. Okay, so this one's a little bit bigger than what I wanted. And eh, it's a little short. But I'm gonna go with that just like so. You see? So there we are. So you have a couple of choices here. Okay, so this is one way to go. We can solder all these pieces and then hammer it, but some people will find that that's a little bit difficult because if you hammer it now, then you risk hammering all the places that you don't want to hammer. Or if you like it hammered all the way, then you can absolutely hammer the whole entire thing flat. But what I like is I like to hammer just the petal because it sort of makes it, um, kind of, it sort of blooms, it sort of blossoms, it's a little bit bigger, right? So I'm just gonna hammer that in. so you can see it's flattened on that end and it just gives it a little bit more definition to the design and of course my end is going to open up you could have soldered this ahead of time and that would not have happened um, I'm choosing not to solder because I'm going to solder all of this in one shot why because I like to tempt the solder gods you know the typical <laughs> the typical thing that I do you know I love soldering in one shot okay so here I'm just moving it forward to make it touch again, try not to mar anything, and we'll do the same for the other pieces. And just hammering the shoulders flat. You can hammer as much as you want. That's up to you. This is all design choices that we're doing here. Okay, here we go. Move it in like so. Okay. So I'm just moving it so that they're nice and tight is all, okay? The joint. Okay. 
Okay, so there's... So if you have any questions as we go along, do post them, and Andy will let me know. Shout out to everybody who's watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Okay. Okay, so we have our pieces like so. And then we have this one. Okay. All right, so I'm going to set that aside. Next thing is you're going to need some fine silver wire. And let's see, what are we doing? We're doing a one inch, three quarter inch, and a half inch piece to create our granules. You know, if you um, are trying to make things exact, always cut them in the same size. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to do a little shameless promotion here. If you have the book, okay, on page 15, I actually show you the sizes of each of the wires. So if you cut it at one inch, it's going to be approximately 3.7 millimeter ball. If you cut it at three quarter inch, you're going to get a 3.4 millimeter ball and then a half inch gets you like a 2.9. So again, that is a little bit of a helpful chart there um, for you. Okay, I'm going to set that aside. I hammered my wire so that when I go to make a ball, it doesn't roll away. Okay. So, you'll need your solder board and your torch at this point, and I'll show you how to make a ball really quickly. Let's put some tools away first before I torch them. Okay. Okay, so I have my, uh, my quarter inch uh, wire there, okay? and we're just going to heat it. This is fine silver. The reason why I'm choosing to do fine silver is because it makes for a nicer ball, especially when you're using a butane torch. Okay, there we are. And then we're going to grab it right before it cools so it doesn't touch the bottom. See? Or it doesn't um, adhere to the, the board. So if you leave it there, it will adhere to the board and you'll get some stuff from the board onto the back of your ball. Just put it on some sandpaper, roll it around until it's gone because you won't be able to solder that. All right, set that aside, and let's start soldering. But that's how you make a granule. Okay, I'm going to set this here. It's hot here. That's why I was, like, debating on where I wanted to put that. Okay, so here you're going to need some solder. If you're using sterling silver, you're going to start with hard solder. But I'm doing copper today, so I'm just going to use copper solder. All right, so some copper solder. And I'm just going to put a little bit on each side of this wire and so that they run right in between the wires, okay? And this is where my tweezers come in handy. We're going to set that down right there. And that will go there. And I'll trim this later, okay? And that will go there. I already have some granules made up on the side here. Yes, one just went rolling there. We'll remember to get that. And we're going to put some solder on the sides here and here because this is going to attach to it. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more for you. Okay. Okay. So, get a little bit of solder on each side of it. Actually, this one I think, okay, that's not going to work because it's not on the side, it's actually on top. So I'm going to move it over. Sort of fickle business here, but since I had too much solder, I split it in half and also moved it down to the side because that's where it's going to make the connection, right? You don't want the solder on top of your, your granule because it doesn't do anything. All right, and then this one, oops, I'm going to put the baby one, oh, right there. I'm actually going to put it on top and not on the side if I can, okay, you need to stay right there. Um, it's just a design choice again. Okay, but you can put it 
in between if you prefer. I'm going to put my right there. Make sure everybody's together. And then this one, this medium one, so I have a large, small, and then the medium will go right on top here. Um, do you need to solder the loops closed? Not necessarily. You can leave them open or you can go ahead and solder them closed. Okay? Sorry. So I put solder here um, where my granule is making a connection. Okay, and I'm pushing everybody back to place. There you go. Okay, so it's heated up. We'll heat the whole entire thing. And ask all the pieces to solder together. Just like so. Try not to melt anything. There, it's starting to flow. And see my solder flowed all the way down the wire. This one did not make a connection. There it is. And I could see it make the connection because I could see the solder flow and I could see that the granule sort of gets sucked into the wire. Okay. Oops. Quench that baby. And here we are. There's our piece. All right. So what are we going to do with this one? I'm turning it over and I'm going to actually cut it at an angle instead of blunt cutting it. If I cut it like this, it doesn't make for a smooth transition. So I'm actually going to cut it at a slight angle like so. And it's just this nice transition into the loop, okay? I'll come back and file that after I quench. Right, I'm sorry, after I pickle. So I'm gonna throw that in the pickle so you can see what's going on. We're going to set this aside and you'll see. It's pretty straightforward what we're doing here. Um, so, I'm actually going to take my sample apart and show you how I'm going to do this. So that loop is going to be your connector. Okay, you can if you prefer to. Um, you can if you prefer to put a jump ring in between. Again, it's just another design choice, and it's another way to approach it. But you'll have to put two if it's going to connect correctly. Okay, so chain of choice, whether it's silver or copper or brass, it doesn't matter, that is up to you. Let's see what's going on in the pickle here. Almost there. Also up to you if you want to liver a salt for this. Again, pretty straightforward. Let's see. I'm going to throw some water into the microwave, heat it up, and let's do some liver sulfuring. All right. Microwave underneath the bench. Heat that up. liver or sulfur, you just need a couple of drops if you're doing this um, with gel or just a granule. What's the preference with um, granules or drops? You know, some people find it easier to use the, um, some people find it easier to use the, the liquid, the gel. It's all the same as far as I'm concerned. I've just had this for 20 years, actually, okay, 10 years, and I'm just trying to use it up. That's what, and back then, uh, there was no such thing as gel. So gel is a new thing. Okay, are we warm enough? We'll throw that in. Swirl it around. So if you have warm uh, liver or sulfur, it actually activates a little bit better and it gives a much more intense look. Another thing too, I don't know if you knew this, here's a trick for you. If you do it in a styrofoam cup, I understand it gives really interesting colors. So, different ways of approaching liver of sulfur. I'm gonna pull out my piece here, out of the pickle, rinse it, dry it off. Here's my piece. Okay, not real pretty, but I'm gonna clean it up for really quickly here. Put some steel wool to it or a brass brush. You know, I switch it up. It depends on how, um, it depends on what it wants. I mean, sometimes it just wants a brass brush, like right now. It depends on what's feeling easier, right? 
So you want to be fluid with your method. You know, just because somebody says to use a steel or a brass brush doesn't mean you have to. There are other ways of getting around it, right? So, yeah. So the brass brush was sort of working, but I'm feeling, I'm going back to the steel wool because I feel like the steel wool is going to happen a little bit better. And you know what? I missed a step. Oops. Okay, so it just occurred to me the step that I missed is I did not solder these joints here. Oops, can you, I'm sorry, too close. I did not solder these joints here where the um, petals met the middle. Okay, do you have to? Not necessarily because you know what? This is a really heavy gauge wire. It's 16 gauge and we also harden it when we um, when we hammered it. So the likelihood of it coming apart is not great. But what if you wanted to? At this point, can you? Absolutely. And I lost my video. It froze up. Sorry. Don't know what happened here. No, I'm, I'm frozen on my computer. <laughs> so I'll turn it back on. Okay. Okay, there we are. Okie dokie. All right, so, um, so what happened if you did it like what I just did? Can you go back and solder them? Absolutely, you can. So let's go ahead and do it. And then I'm going to also address soldering this loop. Do you need to? You don't have to, but you can. So why not? Let's do it. Okay, we'll come back and file this afterwards. Let's pull this back out move some things around on the workbench. Okay, so. Let's see. I lost my uh, solder. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, I just fixed. So Andy's telling me that my video is off, yes. I, I think I just fixed it. I'm going to put a little bit of solder. So if you're doing this with silver, you're going to go to medium solder. Remember, we started with hard solder. And I actually turned it over and I'm doing the bottom, okay? So there we go. A little bit there, a little bit there. And then, actually I'm gonna take out my, oh, my tweezers so that I don't rub all that off grab a little bit more solder and I'm going to put some right there in the loop. Can you see that? So right on the loop and that should close it nicely or actually now that I think about it, oops, you can do it right on the inside. Do it on the inside of the loop, it's better. I don't know. There. Can you see all that? And then there's the solder. I'm putting it on the back side because it makes for a cleaner joint as I ask the solder to come up through because I'm heating from the top. Okay, you'll use medium solder for this step. If you're using copper solder, it's self leveling anyway, so um, you don't have to worry about levels. Okay, so here, just heat it and get everybody nice and hot and then hit those joints. Move it around gently. None of this crazy waving of things around. There we go. And there that went. Okay. Done. Once again, quench and pickle. Do not throw hot things into the pickle. Why? Because, you know, it, it might pop back at you and now you have acid coming at you. So I know that the old timers love, love, love putting hot metals in pickle, but it's safer not to. I understand that it works faster, but how much faster do you need this to work? It's always the question, right? And then there's also an argument that, you know, when you heat metal, the surface opens up, right? And so when you quench it, they close up. There's this argument that you might be closing up or closing in acid, and then you're going to wear it. Eh, I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know how true that is, but I'm going to go with it, and I'm going to quench first and then put it into my pickle. So just, you know, things to think about when you're working through and think about where that information is coming from and how old the information is because you know what? Back in the day, we weren't wearing seat belts, were we? It's a thing. You know, we learn. 
So everything gets better with information and time, right? All right, it's pickling. Let's see what we've got here. Almost there. Give it another minute. And then we're going to clean it again and then we'll live our sulfur it. So this one's not looking very attractive though, this liver of sulfur. Oh, there it is. I must not have mixed it up nicely, but you see it's darkening up for me, so I guess I didn't stir it. Okay. Yay. So, you know, the hotter your pickle is, the faster it works. Somebody was asking me that last week when I was on Twitch, like, oh my gosh, your pickle's happening really quickly. Well, it could be that um, my pickle's hotter, okay? So clean this up. The brass does look like copper. That is copper oxide. It is copper from the brass coming to the surface. So you just need to put a little bit more elbow grease into this if you want it to come back to that brass color. Um, but it will come back. It just needs a little bit of abrasiveness. You can see, there it is. It's starting, it's starting to come back. I know, too much reflection here. Sorry. Okay. Clean that up. And then we'll stick it into the, into the uh, liver sulfur. Okay. So we're preparing for Virtually Ever Crafting. It is on Thursday. Yay! So for everybody who's registered, kits are on their way. They should be arriving at any time. Um, anybody who's registered for China Paint, fingers crossed, it's here on from Germany. It's been a long road coming here from Germany. So we're hoping that they arrive today. If they arrive today, it will make it in time for class on Saturday because we're going to turn it right around and ship it right back out on um, today. Actually, not on anything, but today. If it doesn't work, talking about um, pushing the date, and we apologize for that, but it has not exactly been reliable, the post office this week. So, okay, so notice I'm cleaning it up again and the brass is coming up nicely don't know if you can see that but the brass is coming back in and the copper is cleaning up nicely and I am going to brass brush it because I have a whole bunch of residue in here that I can't get with my um, steel wool it's actually steel wool residue that's stuck in there you know the other thing I also keep on my workbench that most people don't is a toothbrush I say that, and of course my toothbrush went missing. Oh, here it is. So I do take an old toothbrush and I do keep it on the workbench because it's nice just to have it, um, you know, for cleaning up like dust and things, like silver dust is always nice. So um, for the China paint class, the essential oil is because, um, is to ward off evil spirits. No, just kidding. The essential oil, believe it or not, you can use it to apply the enamel. So um, after some discussion with her, we discovered that you can use clove oil, you can use lavender oil. Um, traditionally, with enameling, they used pine oil. Now, that was not really something that was easy for everyone to get, even though I have an entire container of pine oil here. I know, can you make can you believe that? I have a whole container of pine oil, but not enough to go around. So it's just what it's an, a really old technique. And a lot of what um, she's doing is a much more traditional technique to enameling. Okay, so here with the back end, you're going to open this up and put it on. Oh, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, duh, what was I doing? Okay, so obviously it didn't solder, even though I tried to solder it. If you soldered it, you can't do this, but you can definitely solder it afterwards. You just have to be really careful, and you want to do that with um, with easy solder. If you want to solder this, you'll solder it now. Yeah, I guess a good thing that the solder didn't take, huh? <laughs> so the solder gods are smiling upon me today because it didn't work when I didn't want it to work. And that's how you're going to connect all the pieces one at a time um, to get them 
to connect, okay? And that's how you link it up. That's it, that's all she wrote. Um, so, you know, as I'm doing this, you know, I wrote these instructions after I made this piece and I measured, 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 and it, it would seem that I'm slightly off, okay? Well, that my largest piece, despite my best efforts, is still coming out to be the smallest piece. So I'm gonna readjust those instructions and reload it for anybody who has downloaded it already. And I'll reach out to anybody who's who's made the purchase already and send you directly the new um, the new instructions. But if you want to get the exact measurements and whatnot, it'll be in the new, the new instructions. But you know, you just want to make these descending. So if you start it here, the next ones will be bigger, 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 and I would go approximately half an inch bigger for each one to get it um, ascending or descending in size. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, so the question regarding the enamel class, I can't answer that question because it's not my class. So um, I don't know. I it, there's just different ways of using it. You got since you're registered for the class, you'll have to wait for the class on Saturday. Um, but she'll tell you. I'm sure she will tell you. But yes, it is the to answer the question of why the essential oil. It is actually a very traditional um, use of, of or a technique for enamels. If anybody else has any questions, let me know. Um, but that's pretty much it for today. Pretty straightforward. Oh, did I? Yeah, I liver silvered it. <laughs> I'm losing track. I'm sorry. It's Monday. It's one of those Mondays. You know, it's beautiful outside. All I want to do is go outside and sit outside and maybe read a book. Oh my gosh, read a book. Or actually maybe make jewelry outside, not in my, not in the studio. So. I hope everybody has great weather out there and um, hope you can have some time to go out and enjoy it too. So in the meantime, no questions. So um, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for being here. Thanks for liking and sharing our posts and um, downloading the instructions because that's how we keep this going. And on Wednesday, we're going to do a demo day. We're talking about um, flex shafts and how to maintain them and how to clean them. I'll do a, a demo on how to clean one. I need to clean mine anyway. And so Thursday starts Virtually Ever Crafting. If you haven't registered, you still can for virtuallyevercrafting.com. More than likely, you won't get the kit in time, but you can definitely participate. So outside of that, I'll, if you're not coming this week, this week, I'll see you next Monday for the bracelet, the Lilia Valley bracelet. See ya. Okay. <laughs> I know. It's one of those days. Oh my God, can't even speak straight. Okay.